I'm out at Rowena Crest in the gorge. It's springtime and the balsam root flowers are just blooming like crazy. And these, these incredibly gorgeous yellow flowers. And I've come out here today, not to really take photographs, but to scout for in the morning. Uh, it's pitch black and it's uh, not a long hike to get out here, but in pitch blackness, you don't want to be trying to scramble to find a composition when uh, it's dark and you're racing this, the sun is starting to pop up. So this, uh, I'm coming out today to find a couple of compositions that will work. That way when I come back early, early in the morning, I can just come right to the spot, set up, and I'll know my settings more or less as far as my, because I'm gonna have to focus stack, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, I'll have a good idea of where my tripod needs to be. I've already know where the sun's gonna come up uh, using an app on my phone and I'll be ready to go. So this is gonna be great. We're gonna do wildflowers in the gorge. So in the morning, it's probably gonna be windy. The gorge is notoriously windy. I'm gonna to have to have a fast shutter speed. So I've taken some test shots of a couple of compositions and I'll check it on the computer tonight before in the morning just to make sure, number one, that my, uh, that, uh, my shutter speed is gonna be good and also I'm having to focus stack because I'm using a wide angle lens and the flowers are going to be literally, you know, eight inches at most from the front of my lens. So I'm going to fill the frame, the front of my the main subject is going to be the wildflowers. I have a sunrise that's going to be coming up, let's see, right back over here is when the sun's going to peak up. So I want to get that sunburst right when it breaks the horizon is, is my background. I want that with, you know, the gorge, the river. Columbia River back here in the background. I want that as well. So I've got a composition. I've got two places that are relatively close together. Uh, I know how where I need to have my tripod set. I actually made a little marker with some sticks, so hopefully I'll be able to find these places in the morning in the dark. Um, and I'll be able to check to see if I'm focus stacking enough to be able to produce what I need. In the morning, I'm going to also not be able to drag the shutter like for five seconds or three seconds in the pitch blackness as the sun starts to come up. So that means I'm going to have to use a high ISO and a large depth of field. I'm having to use F16. I, I just can't do F22 because there's my ISO would go through the roof and it's probably still going to be extremely high and I don't want a lot of noises. I want to try to keep that digital noise to a minimum. So it's going to require some juggling to get the best settings in order to make these photographs work. Good morning. So it's really windy. Let me show you how windy it is. So like having to, I'm already at ISO 1600, F8, and I can't get my shutter speed even close to be fast enough to even slightly get the blur out of these flowers. So this is, this is uh, probably not going to be a good, a good day to do this. Just not. But I'm going to hang out just a little bit until the sun rises and see if uh, the wind dies down. Hopefully as the sun starts to come up, that wind will start to calm. And uh, all I need is just a small window of opportunity to, uh, to get the shot. So fingers are crossed. I moved to my second uh, location hoping that I would be like on a side of the, the hills that would be kind of have a, like a little wind break but that's just not the case all of these flowers are just being totally whipped by the wind in a, in a fierce way um, and what I've done is I've decided to uh, 
for my sky since it's not moving uh, and it's I've actually got some clouds that were catching color so I set it to ISO 100 sky is not moving to get a clean sky clean shadows for the mountains and stuff in the background and then just crank my ISO as far as I have to while trying to keep I can't go like f4 your depth of field becomes way too shallow and there's just way too many points you would have to shoot from you know where the to get the depth of field from here all the way to the end you just you've got to have some overlap there's just I've, I've tried and I'm not even sure at f8 because I am so close to everything, the F8 is going to be good. So I went to F11. Um, if the wind would stop for 10 seconds, I, I think I could pull off a good shot. Um, the other thing that's that's to dealing with these balsam root flowers is that they are very they're not very stiff, and so they follow the sun. They, their faces kind of like track the sun during the day. And right now they're all facing where sun is going to rise and it's also the direction that the wind is blowing them and so that's not the direction I want them to face I want them to face the camera so uh, you can kind of like like I say they're pretty you know floppy I guess so you can kind of flop them back toward the camera but it doesn't stay if the wind starts blowing again so anyway it's it's obviously a little bit of frustration this morning but Let's see what I can pull out. Now I'll show you what it is, no matter how bad, or good, or okay. But uh, this is the real life. Let's see what I can do. So here's my, my composition as of the moment. I'm trying to get some photos as we talk. I've just put the, these group of flowers front and center, and um, got some of them to face this way. And you can see how bright the background is. It's just as the sun's coming up. So I'm going to grab the shots because there's no way to tell when that wind's going to stop or keep kicking up. And it's already, uh, it, was, it was in a lull when I was showing you the, the, the composition. Now it's back. So uh, I need to try to grab some of these photos. And I, it's nice as the sun comes up, the sky gets worse, which is bad. But the good news is that it allows me to use a much faster shutter speed, which helps with these flowers. Uh, and also, you know, I can slowly start to ramp down that ISO as well. So the sun is up, as you can see, it's hitting my face, but it's gorgeous, and it's absolutely beautiful out here. It's fantastic. Look at the yellow. It's just great. I did manage to get a sun star as the sun came up over the hill right over there. But I don't know how it's all going to work with the depth of field and the flowers moving. I'm going to head back to the van. I'm going to grab a cup of coffee. I'm going to open up the laptop, pull the photos off, take a look, see if there's anything salvageable, if I can make something work, or if I'm going to have to come back and try again. So I'm back in the van. I've had a cup of coffee, and the wind is still just kicking. I can hear it and feel the van. It's moving the van as I'm sitting in it. So I think it was much better right before sunrise because now the sun is up. The wind is just, it, it's it would be totally impossible. I did get some good shots. Uh, I am happy to say that they, with a faster shutter speed and enough patience and planning that I managed to come up with some keepers. I hope you enjoyed the video. I got something out of it. The big takeaway I think for today is that Pre preparation and planning go a long way in overcoming obstacles, knowing where to be, what time to be, and then having a plan in place so that you have a better chance to succeed. The other thing was with the wind, it was, again, knowing your camera well enough to figure out, okay, I need a faster shutter speed, and then being able to take advantage of those small lulls where the wind wasn't blowing to grab a few shots and then change your focus and then do the and do that over and over again and I, I got I got some nice shots so here are my photos again if I hope you like the video please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a video that I release each and every Wednesday thanks for watching and we'll see you next time